My brother, my sister, we're talking about authority and authority feels. But I want to leave you this, with this verse. In heaven, when John got the revelation, they said, who is worthy? And the angel gave a command, do not weep. My brother, my sister, what is the weeping in you? What is the challenge that you have today? Why will you not weep? Because there's nothing to weep about anymore. No. Why would you be okay? You make that decision because somebody ministered to you? No. But see, see the line of the tribe of Judah. See the one. See the authority. See the one that has the final authority in heaven. And if you can submit to the authority, if you choose to look towards the lamb, you've heard that it's the lion. But when he looked, it was the lamb. They said, see the lion of the tribe of Judah. Then I saw the lamb. When you allow the authority of God to come through, when you allow the line of Judah to roar over your circumstance, to roar over whatever you're going through, and you say, God will have the final say. There will not be a roaring of my hurt, a roaring of my disappointments, a roaring of the temptations, a roaring of my opinion and what I feel is doing, the roaring of my emotions. No, if I allow the roaring of the line of Judah and I turn to him because I choose to respond, respect him I choose that he will have the final say I choose that his words I want to live by and I look to him I will see the lamb I will see the one who gave everything and through the lamb you will see the heart of the father when you choose his authority about above every other authority and you choose to respect to honor when you look at him you will see the heart of your father you will see the lamb that gave everything, everything. May God arrest you for that focus. May God arrest you, my brother, my sister. And by his grace, and only by his grace alone, you can give him the honor. You can give him that place. But choose that he will be the final authority. In the book of Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority. All authority. And then he says, therefore, therefore, go. Make disciples, baptize them, teach them, and see. Everybody say, and see. And see, I am with you till the end of the age. And see. My brother, whoever you decide will be the final authority in your life. See, that thing will have a, a presence in you and you will be in his presence in a very special way. If you choose to say, but revenge and bitterness and unforgiveness is the final authority, you'll go with it. That thing will make you something. That thing will teach you something. And see, that unforgiveness and bitterness will, have, will manifest itself in a very special way in your life. Why? Devil cannot think out something new. He can just copycat the pattern. And the pattern is God that says, all authority given to me in heaven and on earth. And if you recognize that, if you respect that, if you believe that I have the final authority, then you will go. And people will be influenced by you. Make disciples. Baptize them. That's about let them identify with me. And teach them the way of the, of the truth. Teach them in freedom. Teach them to, so for them to understand how to build on the solid rock. A house that will stand in a storm. That's a friend. That's a friend. When you can teach others, when you can give the word, not to condemn them, not to give them a lot of rules, but if you can give foundations to other people, that's a friend, so that your friend can build a house on the rock so that when the storm comes, I was too shy to teach you how to build a house on the rock. That's why my friend's house is on the sand and you will crash and it will crash on you and it will destroy you. That's because I'm your friend and I, and I, and I didn't want to give you the gospel. I didn't want to preach to you. What a hell of a friend. 
But if you were a true, genuine friend, and you allowed the authority of God to come in you and through you, and you're really a friend, you will give that man, your friend, the people that you study with, the people that you work with, you will give them foundations so that they can also build their house on the rock. How selfish if you will build your house on the rock and you don't care if they build on sand. <laughs> you can crash in on them and their families and their future. It's okay. I, I don't feel, I don't have the time to tell them that Christ has a plan for you. Jesus loves you and you are special to him. He made you. You're not rubbish. Surrender. Just surrender to God and let him show you. Let him surprise you through his word to show you who you are and who you can be. Because you had such an amazing value that Jesus paid the price through his blood for you. But if you believe they are rubbish and they are not valuable, don't speak to them, please. They are your friend. This must go to hell when you go to heaven. Yes. <laughs> May God help you. May God help me. Oh, man. A lot of rubbish happening out there. But it's amazing. Look. Maybe on the tube, or I don't know where you guys look, YouTube or on the Facebook or on the whatever. The amazing revival on university campuses in America. And guys that never would worship. Suddenly, where they would just come together and the wara, 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 suddenly there's just worship and there's thousands of people, of students. More than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven campuses that is just going. And people, it's just suddenly all about him and not about them that's amazing god come and do it in our midst please amen but for that my brother my sister choose well, the biggest thing in revival is not the fact that somebody was being raised from the dead the biggest thing in revival is that god come to have the final say in your life with the revival, when the revival breaks out, it's like the guys go to the front, they, they fall on their knees and they repent. They say, this rubbish, I don't need it in my life. I don't want it in my life anymore. Oh man, but it starts with a man in brokenness. It starts with somebody that will say, God must have the final authority in this department of education, in this place, in this campus, in this hostel, in this student house. God must have the final authority. Who have the guts to say that? And who has the guts to accept that and choose to believe that? You will see that. Why must all the rubbish in education have the final authority so that they will know? You can be whatever you want to be. And, and, and the men can go, if you believe you're a woman, you can go into the, the woman's bathroom. And you can do this and you can do that. And you can do the most sickening rubbish. What happened in America, especially in some of the places, and it's coming more and more and more here. Who, who, who determined that that's the final authority? The final authority, is you will not teach about Christ. You will teach that you come from a baboon, and you will teach all this rubbish, the Big Bang. There wasn't the master that created everything. Who made the final decision that that is the education syllabus for the youth of South Africa? A group that stood up and said, we declare this is the final authority for the next generation. Even though more than 80% they are Christian, we determine. We 10%, 5%, 3%. We will determine, determine that the church will be silent and they will go with what we say because we have the final authority. Who are they? They only have authority because the church didn't take up the authority. Because the church was too professional to say, Jesus Christ has the final authority in education and therefore this is what will be taught. Problem is not the rubbish that are taught. The problem is the church is silent. And we're going to go beyond this. We're going to go beyond this type of life. Hello? And it's not government, first of all, that must change it. We, it's the church that need to change. Romans 8. Romans 8 says that creation is suffering, suffering, suffering. And waiting eagerly, eagerly for the manifestations of the sons of God. 
Who are they? The mature Christian. The Christian, the son of God, a son of God in this son of God. is people that says, it's not about me, it's all about you. Not my will, your will be done, Lord. It's a pleasure, it's an honor to live for you and to do your will. Oh man, we're going to have so many other reasons, so many excuses why Christ will not be the one saying in my life, all authority has been given to me on, in heaven and on earth. That's a statement that you can allow Jesus to have. And that means we say, we agree with that. And that means we will allow him to have that statement. But in our lives, who will determine if you will get into the word, if you will be in prayer, if you will speak to people about Christ, if you will set out and sort out the, the different areas of your lives, of your life. Why, why, why? Because you decide, yes, Jesus Christ will have the final say. He will have all authority in every area of my life to do whatever he wants. In the heavenly realm, in the atmosphere over my life. That's the heavenlies over you. That's the heavenly realm. Over your life that is coming with you, the presence of demonic, the presence of, of God, the presence of issues, the presence of, of bitterness, the presence of whatever. Because who has the final authority? Over your life, in your life, and where you walk. In heaven and on earth, where you walk, there's a final authority coming into that place. And when people come with temptation, when people come with the drugs, it's not about the drugs. Because if they come in the presence of Christians that are standing in the name of Christ with the authority from heaven, that guy will suddenly don't want to take the drugs. He will even throw it there and say, this thing is not, it's not working for me. Or suddenly they will see the light. Suddenly they will get some idea that maybe I must deal with this rubbish and get it out of my life. Why? Because there's some Christian that decided that Christ has the final authority over their lives, in their lives and through their feet. Wherever they work, wherever they walk, wherever they study, wherever they relate, God's going to raise up a company of people. They're going to be like that. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Otherwise, church will be slaughtered in the end time. Where God's going to brag about his church, a victorious bride. He's not coming for a, for a bride in, in absolute fear, hiding in the corner because of the tribulation, because of all the things happening in the world. And he's quickly from behind, through the window, getting his bride out. Okay? Is that your attitude to the way would you, live? you would live? No, not anymore in Jesus' name. He's coming back for a beautiful, beautiful, victorious bride. Formed, unfortunately, many times through tribulation. Yes. So tomorrow the temptation that is like a tribulation in your life that is coming against you. Let it be counted all joy when you fall in various trials. Oh, I'm struggling with this. Count it all joy because God's going to give you a breakthrough. There's joy in, the, joy in the offering that must be there. Joy in the offering of yourself. And you will see a breakthrough. You will see the breakthrough if you can count it all joy. But if your joy all depends of, on if there's a trial, if you have a breakthrough, if your circumstances changed, then you have joy. And you pray that it changed. You have faith that it changed. You take the promises so that it changed. No. Take the promise that you changed. Amen. Why does the circumstances not change? Iran. Hello? Iran. China. Indonesia. Philippines. Where there's Muslim strongholds. You dare stand up. You preach the word. You can be thrown in jail. You could be slaughtered. Hello? But why there's this major revival? Why? How can it be? The, is the church, they, do they not have faith? Do they not have faith to, so that the whole government will change, so that this will change, so that that will change? And no, oh, their faith does not work because the government does not change. And there's all this unfair, unfair, unfair tribulation if you choose Christ. How does it happen? There's something in those people. 
in those Christians. There's a certain level of maturity. There's a certain level of unselfishness that is all about him. God, and even if I die, that's just an um, awesome, awesome, awesome privilege to know you. Final authority. When we started to minister in Romania, where some guys came to Criari from Romania, and it was just after the fall of communism. You know, they were youth. I, I will never forget in my life. First time we went there, we still had to be very careful because there were a lot of people with that mindset of the Christians that are, we catch you with Bibles, you're in jail. You preach the gospel, we kill you in those communist times. It was still just in that where the mindset was still not good. But then I remember entering with some churches where we ministered and I remember even with the youth, the way that they dress was something. But, but, what I, what I experienced was how they, how they, how they held their Bibles. <laughs> you won't believe it. It was so, they had it with such an awesome respect. Because their grandfather or grandmother, if a Bible, they were caught with a Bible, they go to jail or they are killed. And I can have what granny would die for. It was so, I will never in my life forget that picture of seeing these young people with their Bibles. And you could see, even in how they would hold their Bibles, how they respect it. I have a Bible. I have a Bible. Whoa. Oh, come on, man. And then in the period of 15 years ministering there many times, it was so sad to see how the Western culture came in. How it became more a thing of, you know, we are there. Not necessarily this attitude, but you know, we've heard this again. We, we've heard this, you know, religion of, I've heard it. And it's not necessarily a Bible, or the Bible is there, but, but that awesome respect, appreciation for the Word of God. And to hear the Word of God, and to worship Him. And we can worship Him with loud voice. Not screaming, I mean, but we can open our mouth and we can sing that others can hear us. Grandma, grandpa had to be silent worship and mime the song. Or very, very soft. Because if one will be loud, they can be caught. And then my friends and my family, all these 20 can be thrown in jail. But what an awesome privilege that we can open our mouths and we can sing the word. There was a certain authority that they understood. They understood the authority from hell and the authority of the flesh and the authority from the world. But they understood also the authority that God gave them. And they said, even if I die, I will worship the Lord. We will come together. May God help you. May God help me. That we will deal with every authority field. That you, there's a field, there's an area in your life that's all about emotions. And my hurt will have the final say. This thing happened and my opinion will have the final say. This happened and the authority I will give to my personality that will tell me, this is not your personality. God will not use you necessarily in this way. Or this is how you work. This is how you are. And my relationships, things that I will allow, certain justification, why I can, what are, what are here, what are, what are there, and who in the church, you know? Because I gave that opinion, that mindset, I gave the authority in the atmosphere over my life and in my life. That's it. People with the same mindset, they just get out to one another. Devil and hells will make sure that they meet one another but may God show you divine connections this week this month before you go on holiday for uh, for whatever you work before the end of the year God give me your divine connections divine connections in in checkers to tell them God loves you or you are precious to Christ or God's going to speak to you or or people that must be in my life I must be in their life for what you want to do through us and in us and with us People that I saw on the street, people that I saw in church, that God would just say, reach out to that man. That guy, that guy must come full time. Or that guy, this must happen. That must happen. And some of them were leaders like for 15 years, 20 years. 
together in Creare. But, but where, where did it start? I just saw that guy and I just felt, go there. I can make a fool of myself. He can laugh at me and say, Futsack. Okay. But some people out there, there's divine connection for you to have awesome destiny. I had this one lady, but this is now on her. I saw this one lady, but that was long ago. <laughs> and I wasn't married. And I thought, yo, yo, yo. But this is not the right approach. To learn from my mistakes. So I went to her and I said, do you not want to become the mother of my child, 12 children? <laughs> she laughed at me. And, uh, at that stage, I said, I want to have 12 children, man. But um, it not, will not work. If she says yes, you must know that must be the Lord. Okay. <laughs> but don't try that. Okay. What am I saying? Ah, you took me from the point, David. Basic no. Authority. Authority. Decide who will have the final authority. Amen. We go with the first scripture. Please. Luke 10 verse 9. That's in the, in the place where Jesus sent out the 70 people. They were not this major, major, mature leaders, full-time ministers. No, they were some guys that followed him. Heal the sick who are there and tell them. Now that was in the time when he would say, go and just heal the sick. Like you pray for the guys with cancer and they're going to be healed. And drive out the devils and raise, raise the dead. Oh, come on. Let us say, let, let's make as if we could say that command today. Okay, guys, after the service, please go and heal the sick and drive out the devils and, and raise the dead. Thank you. Okay, the, if that is now, if we don't think it is a story anymore, but if that's reality, that, that's what happened. But the major thing through all of that was not that the dead are raised. The major thing was to tell them the kingdom of God is near you. The final authority from heaven is near you. When you see the devil will go, how? In the name of Jesus. The, whoa, they get respect for this Jesus. That man is healed from the cancer. That man is out of his wheelchair. That one is raised from the dead. Whoa, so that what? You have respect for who is this man? Who is this king? Who is this one that you do it in the name of who? Jesus. So that there's respect. So that what? So that they can wow about it and go to hell. No. So that they can get the fear of God on their lives. And choose. I choose that king's name over my life. He must have the final authority. And what did you do? You gave your life to Christ so that he will have the final authority. Not, not just so that you can miss hell. No. You gave your life to him because he said, be my Lord, be my Savior. I surrender my life. I surrender my authority. The thing is, the day when we did that, we think now it's over. Clickety-click and there we go. That was the first biggest ever miracle in your life when you gave your life to Christ. But from there, for your soul, for your emotions, now you need to break down the strongholds. And now in your life you must say, you will not have the final authority he will have. You will not have, he will have. And the more you allow him to have the final authority, the more you come, become the voice from heaven. Where's heaven's voice in the hostel? Where's heaven's voice in Bloomfontein? Where's heaven's voice over your future? Hello, you need that type of friend. You need that type of brother and sister that will pray he through heaven's voice over your life. Amen? The church can become that voice. Creation is suffering. Creation is, is groaning for the manifestations of the mature Christian, of the sons of God. They don't have an issue with this and an issue with that and an issue with that. Oh, may we all grow up. Amen. Waiting for the manifestation of the sun so that one, so the creation will be liberated. So the blue fountain, oh, because of the presence of God. So that the university in Bloemfontein, man, let there be a revival. A lot of things, a lot of things, a lot of things started in this city with the redemptive destiny of patterns being birthed, the laws of the country being formulated, and this is how it will be. This is the final authority, and government will go by this. This is a destiny over the city. Now, what about the Church of Christ? 
This is how it will be in this nation. This is how education will be. This is how things will happen. Because you bring down the authority from heaven into this place. So that's when you think of Bloemfontein. That's part of the destiny that God has. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Let tell them the kingdom of God is near you. Kingdom of God is near you. Kingdom of God, why, what is that? Where he is the king. Where Christ is the king in his kingdom. This is not the kingdom of Britain or the kingdom of India. If it was the kingdom of India, then it means India and the government of India is the final say. If India says, this is what you'll do, you just eat curry and that's all that you will eat, then everybody will eat curry. Because they decided it. Hello? And that's just logic. Those countries, you will drive on the right side of the road. If you drive on the left, you're going to be seen as either crazy or you're going to get a fine. And if you keep on doing that, most probably your license will be taken from you that you will never ever be able to drive again. Because the government decided you drive on the right side. And this other place, that you will drive on the left side. And the cars will be fixed at the steering wheel. Is that the thing? Will be on this side and that cars, the steering wheel will be on that side. Ah, hello. Stupid. Why, why can everybody not be the same just in this room? You never thought about that, hey? Okay. I drove there in Europe and you drive, but you, and, this, and then I clap the gear because I want to change the gears, you know? And, but the gears are now this side. Oh, what, a, what, what am I saying? There's an authority that is just logically that will be over your life. It will have the final say. Your emotions will have the final say because you live from that place. Your hurt, your disappointment, you live from that place. It must have and it will have the final say in your life. In a place where you're supposed to drive on the other side of the road. You, you are destined for crashing. Let it not be so anymore in Jesus' name. God wants to protect you. So stay with these principles. Drive on the right side of the road. If you are in such a place. Ajalayir. Kingdom of God is near you. You have the final authority near you. But when you gave your life to Christ, it wasn't the kingdom near you. It is the kingdom in you. So in you is now the final authority from heaven. If you could just open your mouth. If you can first just learn the language so that you're not and you don't know what you're saying. You're speaking Chinese. But, but if you learn the language Chinese, then you know what you are saying. And you will say the right things at the right time in the right place. True, you learn the language and then you can speak and you open your mouth and you bring the final authority in that hostel at that university. Finish. Tell your neighbor, finish and clear. Ah, uh, okay. Are uh, you here? So kingdom, everybody say, kingdom near you. Kingdom in you. And then inherit the kingdom. When you surrender to God, the word says many times, you will inherit the kingdom. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Your inheritance in Christ for his victory is, this, first of all, the authority. He gives you the authority to be a child of God, that you will not burn in hell, that you will go to heaven for eternity with God. He gave you the authority. And if he didn't give you that authority, if the final authority didn't speak, you have no destiny. But the, you decided the final authority in heaven and on earth will be Jesus Christ who said, if you receive me, you will become a child of God. You will be saved. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You can know that you know you have eternal life. And you decided that's the final authority. Hello? So now for the rest of your life, learn and give him the final authority and get, him, get into that place so that you understand. Then when he says... All authority given to me, therefore go. Go in bitterness. Go in fear, if fear has the final authority. Because you hear the voice of fear and you react on it. What you obey, that is your master. What you obey, that is your master. You hear the voice of fear, that's why you will not speak about Christ. Or you hear the voice of this, you hear the voice of temptation, and you foofy, foofy, foofy with the lady. Or you hear this and you, hello. Not going to happen anymore. Let's say it's not going to happen anymore. In Jesus' name. 
What is your inheritance? Inheritance that you have today in the name of the Lord. When somebody die, let's say your granny had uh, four billion dollars and she died. You're not happy that she died, but she died. And now you inherited four billion dollars. You're so excited about it, but you always leave it in the bank. You don't do anything with it. You live like a scholly on the street. And what a, what a waste. What a waste. If at least it was like that you really had nothing. <laughs> but that you had four billion dollars. You inherited so much in the name of Christ. The first what you inherited is eternal life. Secondly, now the name of Christ that you can use. The blood of Christ that is over you, that can protect you and save you, that you can enter the throne room anytime. The word of God that can set you free to have an excellent life with a foundation that when the storm comes, your house will stand. Hello, that you have insight to live an eternal, excellent life. The word of God, all oh, that, everything, so many we can talk about for next hour, about what you received as inheritance now. Now you work with your inheritance the name of the Lord, the blood of Christ, the grace of God, the enablement, the word of God, the presence of God, the wisdom of God, the guidance of the Lord, all of that. But what God are you going to do with it? Israel, yes, set free from Egypt through the desert, attitude, attitude die for 40 years in the desert and then go and cross the Jordan and see how God opens the door and walls fall in in Jericho, eyes slaughtered and many, 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 many miracles and then they inherited the land but they didn't take possession of the land and therefore for so many centuries they had wars upon wars upon wars about, upon rubbish that then they fall in rubbish and the God must use the enemy to bring them back to him and then they, he said, they're okay and because their prayer life and what they have is about them and when he's going good, we go a little bit one side. No, no, not so much with the Lord and then God must use again the enemy to they bring them back to him. They didn't possess the land. Take possession on, what, of, on that what you inherited. If you don't work and understand how to work in the name of Christ, with the name of Christ, through the name of Christ on your lips. If you don't have the fear of God on your life. If you don't understand the blood and the word and the presence and the guidance and the wisdom. It's okay. You inherit it. But you're never going to take possession of it. The enemies of Canaan, the enemies that lived in that land, they're going to fight you forever till you die. And you're going to fight them till you die. Well, that's not God's destiny for you. That's not his will for your life. But where does it start? Authority. You choose who you're going to respect the most. You don't feel like worshiping today. Worship is a lifestyle, but you declare through the song. You don't feel like so he will not have the final say. My emotions and my feeling will have the final say. So that when I walked out here, my feelings will have more authority and more and more the final say over my life. No. Everybody say no. So in Jesus' name, you make sure that you get yourself in the right place through the grace. Amen. Next one. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Okay. That is whatever hell wants to do over your life. In that context, that was not a once thing. There was, that's the atmosphere over your life. When you understand how to walk in the name of Christ, through the blood of Christ, the guidance of the Spirit, wisdom of the Lord, and the Word of God, whatever is over your life, that what is not from God, and it's down. Everybody say, Psh. now that's not a lightning. Eh? Well, we don't want to try and do that. But, that thing is gone. It's gone with it. It's gone. If you understand and fear and respect the name of Christ and his word. That's it. Right. We go on. He says further. So he says like within one second, within the split of a second, Satan has no authority over you. Just like the lightning. Pew, it's gone. Whatever could build up, it's not going to have impact anymore. 
I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. I have given you authority. Now the one that has a final say says, I have given you the authority. So the policeman, traffic cop, he comes out, he stands on the N1. You've seen people like that. Hey, yay, yay. And I don't know if prayer works then. I tried it, but it didn't really work. But uh, he comes out and he do this. And he has the authority of all the power of a 30-ton truck. Doesn't matter how big the engine. You don't come against that major engine for, of a 30-ton truck. Please, please don't be so stupid. But unfortunately in our lives, we try to come against a lot of stuff in our lives. Ah, you've been given. You've been given as inheritance that you can do this. Boom. And the truck will go, how? Oh, yeah, I forgot it. What does the truck do when you do this? What does the enemy do when you do this? You've heard that sound. Anybody heard that before? Oh, what is it called? A truck. So, everybody do this. Everybody. No, I don't hear you. Let's try that again. Mr. DCR. I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, what hell can throw against you. Whatever plan hell bring against you, they must go. I tried that in that guy. I tried the bitterness. I tried the fear. He didn't do it. Hello. Oh, we can go and fight against the truck, you know? No, man. No, man. I gave you the authority to trample on snakes. To have a fight with the snake? No. Just to walk on it. To trample on it. To trample on it. But you better trample on the head, hey? <laughs> Are you with me? You better trample on the plan of the enemy. But you don't know it's the, the head of the snake. You don't know it's the plan of the enemy if you don't know the plan of God. Because if you know the plan of God, you will identify that the plan from the devil it's not from God. That, that head of the snake, what he has in his brain, that's not from the Lord. So that's a snake. You trample on that plan. You trample on those thoughts. You plan, trample on that head. And even the, the tail and the, and the snake can do like this and whatever. You're not afraid because you know <laughs> his head is on, under your feet. So he can do whatever crawling. Uh-uh, not going to work. Are you with me? Remember Genesis uh, 3.15, when man and woman, they, they, they sinned and all humanity fell, then immediately God gave a promise. The snake will come and he will, oh, what's that doing? Bite you on the heel. What? Something like that. But you will trample his head. First of all, he talked about Jesus Christ on the cross, on the cross, on the cross. Powerful victory. And he trampled the head and the plan of the enemy when he said, it is finished. Resurrection was the plan from heaven. Dying as the perfect lamb. As the perfect lamb. Was Jesus saying, no other authority will come above me. And the perfection that lives in me. That was the victory. That was the finishing line for the victorious one. It is finished. So, and that gave you, where God says, I give you now the authority. You can trample, but, uh, or you can have a very nice conversation. This is right, that is wrong, this is right, that is wrong, like Adam and Eve in the Garden of, of Eden, and, and, and they talk to the snake. You can talk and reason with the snake, but why this and why that, and maybe this is okay and that is okay. Maybe... And that's with all that reasoning, the people walk with the brain of the snake and saying, we come from the baboon and we this and we can be that, we can be that, we can be that. And don't let the brain of a snake teach you. 
Let's say, I will not allow the brain of a snake to teach me. Okay. Tremble on it. God gave you authority to silence the, that, that robbies. Are you? And the scorpions. Don't ever fight with the scorpion. But you just trample on it. Okay? Um, nothing will harm you. Nothing will harm you. Oh, a lot of harm can come to our lives. Only why? Because we don't trample on the snake. We don't trample on the scorpion. So the snake will have the authority. The scorpion will have the authority. Because we don't trample this on the snake. We don't trample on the scorpion. Hello? Are you with me? May God help you and me. Next one. However, however, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. Don't just rejoice that you trample the snake. Yay! Trample on the scorpion. Yay! The truck. Yay! That you have that authority. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Rejoice in the, the, in the fact that it's only God's grace. You're supposed to burn in hell. But rejoice in the fact that God has given you this awesome privilege and awesome honor to stand in his name with his authority. It's just a privilege. It's just an honor. Hello? Next one. I'm sending you. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore be as shrewd as snakes. Verzichtig. That's verzichtig. Shrewd. What verzichtig in English is? Careful. Be careful. Not careful because you're afraid. The snake is not afraid, but the, the snakes are actually clever in how to be careful with their strategy. The snake has a strategy. But the strategy, because he's careful, he's clever in his strategy. Are you with me? So that part, because snakes were not created in, in hell, is symbolically used by God in that sense, but, but, but you need to understand how to be careful as a snake. Are you with me? And innocent as doves. Okay. I send you as sheep among the wolves. So my brother, my sister, you are sent as people that are going to lose when you fight against the enemy. When you fight against the world, you're going to lose. I send you to the people where you will be the loser and they will be the winner. Because a sheep and a wolf think about the fight we don't have to think twice. The sheep going to lose. He's not going to win the fight against a wolf. He cannot bite him. He cannot kick him. And then the wolf die and surrender and whatever. It's impossible. Jesus said, oh, what an encouragement. I, she, I, I send you in like losers against the winners of the battle. What is he saying? You're not going to make it without me. If you don't take your inheritance, if you don't understand how to stand in my name, stand with my word through the blood and my presence and through my wisdom, you're not going to make it. But I'm sending you there. So God knows where he is sending you. He's, he knows. So if you're not surrounded sometimes with wolves, just know you're not sent by God. <laughs> and he didn't say, I'm going to chase away the wolves. Don't fear my child, I will chase away the wolves. No, he says, I'm sending you to the wolves. <laughs> Hello? Are you here? Therefore, be, be cautious. Have the wisdom. Uh, be as clever as that snake. They just know how to be, even this rat can... <laughs> For some reason, just that snake is in. <laughs> he has the rat. You haven't seen that? Okay. Okay. Innocent as doves. Dove is, they, they, uh, Hosea says, don't be as stupid as a dove. A dove is on whistle. Um, um, English? Stupid. Yeah. Don't be as stupid as a dove. Uh, Hosea, God through the prophet Hosea really said that. You know, when you see some innocent people, uh, you, we call them sometimes gullible. Some are called blondes, but it's not, it's not really like that. Please don't quote me. All I'm saying is, innocent. Many people with an with a innocence in them as a childlike faith. And in that childlike faith, it doesn't necessarily come across very clever. Very clever. Are you here? So the dove, necessarily, the dove doesn't necessarily come across so clever like this 
hawk or this uh, eagle. But you need to walk in this world. You not need to walk when you walk into the place with the wolves. When you're going to walk into the place where, where hell is manifesting and wants to intimidate you. When hell wants to intimidate you, walk into the place as little children. You cannot enter the kingdom if you don't walk, enter as children. So with the innocence, with a sincere faith, with a childlike faith and attitude, that is the only way you will be able to overcome. That's the only way you will be able to come with authority. That guy, hello, that, there's the, the enemy and this, this guy just come in and walk through and say, hey, what's wrong with that guy? He looks stupid. But if that guy knows I, I come in the certain authority, he just walk into the place <laughs> because he knows with what type of authority he enters this place. With that innocent, beautiful, clean faith. That's how you walk with the authority of Christ. Amen. And in that way you are sent. Yes, next one. Be on your guard against men. Oh, I thought be on your guard against the snake. Be on your guard against the devil. Be on in this one he says be on your guard against men. Not against the devil, you're going to trample on his head. Not against the scorpion, you're going to trample. I give you all the authority over the power of the enemy. Don't be careful at the, about against the enemy or the snake. or the, Be careful with men. Why? They will hand you over, not the devil. They will hand you over to local councils and flog you. That is like beat you up in their synagogues. What are we talking about? Be careful of government over your life. And this is not just political government. Yes, political government will not like, more and more and more and more, so many governments will not like what Christians are doing. Because at the end of the day, governments you will unite. Like you have the Euro countries. Hello? Governments will unite until you have the new world order of one government. And this one government will say, with authority. We're talking about authority. With authority, we'll say. There will be one authority. That's not all about the 666. The new world order, the new one government is like there's now one major, major authority over the nations of the earth. And this authority will say, this will happen, this will not happen. You can say these words, you cannot say Jesus Christ with respect. You cannot do this, you cannot do that, you will do that. It's about, all about authority. Hello? Be on guard against the men. They will hand you over to the local councils. They will flock you in the synagogue. Synagogue, there will be a religious system. More and more. Be careful of the religion. Be careful of the government over your life. And it's not just people. That's the government that you allow here. The government that you allow here that is ungodly. That is the religion that you allow here. That's the religion that you allow here. Not just out there. But be careful. They're going to do it. So be careful so that you can run away and you will never be flocked and you will never be thrown into jail. No, he didn't say that. Let's go on. On my account, you will be brought for the name of Jesus. You will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. You will be brought to them because you stood against me or because you stood against them or you stood against yourself. Nothing about you against this, you for this, you for that, you against this. And let's see, it all depends on who you are, who you chose. No, no, no. You are, you are there to be a witness. You are there to testify. So more and more, there will be tribulation for testimony. Let's say tribulation for testimony. And that is tribulation in all these other countries, China and, and, and Iran and all these places. And the church is growing. There's revival in Iran. There's revival in China. There's revival in Indonesia and all these places. It's supposed to be the least places, uh, the places with the least revival. But no. There's the biggest revival among those people. Okay. Testimony through tribulation. Witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. Next one. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. 
At that time, you will be given what to say. When they arrest you, don't worry, I will get you out of jail. <laughs> no. When you arrest them, when they arrest you and, and they uh, give false accusations and they flog you, they beat you up and they do this and they do that against you, don't worry, I will come and protect you. Not at all. But when you stand in the name of Christ, the type of worry you, that you can have is that your testimony could maybe not be accurate. Wow, this is a different company of people. The worry is like, what, how can I testify accurately about Christ? And Jesus said, don't worry. We will tell you what to say. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Spirit will be in you and He will tell you how to have a pure, excellent awesome testimony and you will speak what we want you to say it's like an ambassador ambassador of a country so if i'm in that other country and there's there's war uh, against our country and and you're an ambassador and they could even slaughter you they can even kill you and they call you because this nation threw a lot of missiles on them as a nation and they call the ambassador of that country and the government says, don't worry. We will tell you what to say. What if I say something wrong? I'm an ambassador of that country. And the leadership of that country tells you, don't worry. In the meeting, give us a call. We will tell you exactly how to answer every question. Now this is, you're not from this world. You're from a different kingdom. And if you believe with maturity you're an ambassador of Christ, it's not to pray against all the things that are going to happen. It's to pray about me saying the right words. Me being an accurate ambassador of the country that I will give my life for. Don't worry about your testimony. You will be accurate. Why? At that time, it will be given to you what to say. Next one. For it will be not you speaking, but it will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. What a promise. When it's getting rough and rough and, and you're gonna, uh, I can experience some, some tough situations more and more. The mature will just worry about that my testimony will be pure, pure, pure. Like in, in a, is it in a Colosseum? Where they threw all the Christians, and then the lions would come out. And it was freaky, eh? And then the people would see how they slaughter and eat and rip apart the people and eat them alive and all of that. Because what? Because they are Christians. They didn't deny Christ. But then a lot of Christians, according to the record, a lot of Christians would just come together and we will start to worship God. Looking at one another and worship God. And the lions will still come. The lions will not walk away. Oh, no, no, no. The lions still came and slaughtered them. Still, still they were slaughtered. Still they were eaten alive and dropped into pieces. Still. <laughs> and then the guys, the authorities stopped that. Because they said it's not fun anymore. <laughs> Because it wasn't fun anymore. Because the Christians just today, they just looked at the worship service. You know, all the people. And then they took them and nobody, ah, and they ran away. Da, da, da. And then they stopped it. Oh, that was interesting. Okay. But that happened. All I'm saying is, my brother, my sister, every opportunity you choose to worship the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? It will be you will know what to speak because it will be this, the voice from heaven that is alive in you. Next one. Brother will betray brother. Oh, thank you, Lord, even if that was not enough as an encouragement, everything that you said. Now, that you're not going to take us out of jail. We, you even say, my brother will betray brother to death, even to death. Brother will say, I, I don't know, that, that guy, blah, 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 his own brother, and he know my brother is going to die. And a father is child. Children will rebel against the parents and have them put to death. That's sick, man. That's sick. And Jesus said, it's going to happen. Next one. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Ha. Ah, thank you, Lord, for the encouragement. The people. Let's go, you know. Sheep. Meh, 
against the wolves, you know. All of those stuff will happen and uh, they will throw you. They will throw you in jail. Government will be against you. The, the religious system will be against you. People will kill one another. Your family will be against you and some will be put to death. Father's child, brother, brother. And uh, everybody will hate you. And I'm not going to save you from any of that. Jesus says. You sound excited. <laughs> but God says, don't worry. You will say the right things if you follow me. <laughs> because when you hear this, I believe, says the Lord, that you will only worry about your testimony. You will not worry about your life. Wow. <laughs> are, you, are you with me? May God help Ukraine. May God help the guys in Gaza and Israel and Lebanon and all these places. Hello. And when Israel throw the missiles and on a Christian village and a lot of Christians and I don't know if there's kids, but and they are bombed and a lot of Christians gone and what they even said on the news and bombing. They must find the right piece of the right leg and write this and this to the right person. Oh, that's the Christians that pray for God's protection and the angels will guard them and this and this and this. You don't understand. I don't understand the fairness of things, but we understand that there was opportunity for testimony. There was opportunity to walk with God in that what he has for our lives. Are you here? You are still here. May God help you. Hate or hate you. That's society. So, let's go again. Governments will be against you, Jesus said. Okay. Religious systems will be against you. Great. Family will be against you and kill you and whatever. And society will be against you. Great. And it's all because of me. <laughs> Jesus says, but don't worry. My spirit will give you the right testimony. That is men and women with authority. If you don't know your authority, you will not be able to understand that. Because you have authority that has eternal value. Eternal value. Hello? And through the authority of your testimony, many people will come to Christ. Many people will come to Christ. His kingdom will be advanced. That's your choice, my brother, my sister, if, if you can embrace authority in the right context. Authority not for you to just have a blessed and a more happy life. But you know that authority has been given with a purpose. So that you're not a product of your past. You're not a product of your circumstance. You're not a product of your success or your failure. You're not a product of your hurt and your disappointment. You're not a product of what people say about you. You're not a product of all that. You're a product of the heart of the Father. Because you are the dream in his heart. And he has an eternal, eternal destiny for you. Let's go for excellence. Because excellence is alive in you. Amen. God, here we are. Come and do what you want to do in and through our lives, Lord. Please. Please, Lord. We need you. We need you. Forgive us for immature prayers. Forgive us for immature uh, perspectives, Lord. God, but forgive us for not respecting you and your word and your blood and your name as the final authority in our lives, Lord. We walk away from our opinions, our hurts, our disappointments, our circumstances, our success as the final authority, our reasonings, our justifications. We walk away from that and say, God, please, please come and be the final authority in every area of our lives. Holy Spirit, show us. Show us how to make it practical. Holy Spirit, show us that, that our testimony, testimony will be pure, accurate. Like all those worldly kings said, the, 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 the God of, of Joseph, the God of Daniel, the God of his friends, that's the only true God. Help us, help us to shine our, loud, our light in such a way that they will say, their God must be glorified. Make us that type of ambassadors. Help us to walk away from immaturity and childish ways, but to walk into childlike faith. That's our decision in unity as I pray you will touch every man, woman in this place and remind them, Holy Spirit, of the word for a 30, 60, 100-fold harvest in and through their lives. Come and do that, please, Lord, 
in and through their lives. I honor you for that. I thank you for that, Father, that you come and do that in Jesus' name and in that name alone. And all say, Amen, Amen, Amen.